Welcome back guys, Fearless Dojo here, and we are playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition. And we just found Asari, or the, the Asari, I can't remember, Liara, that's her first name, she's an Asari, Liara. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to some of our crew members. They should probably have something to say, maybe? I don't know, find out. Um, Caden. I haven't done much with Caden. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Pick your mind, sir. Blanco. When it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the world. Beats the brain tumor some kids grew up with. Seems like you beat the odds. How many didn't make it? Out of a hundred, maybe sixty have no effect. Thirty suffer adverse effects, little things like brain cancer. <laughs> the other ten show enough ability to augment with implants. Not always permanent, though. Not like the cancer. Next thing you know, you're out on jump zero. And how's a kid supposed to deal with that? A station at the edge of human space. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bull every night after dinner and play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. The perfect I woman. Liked her. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same, but things never fell together. Training, you know. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your Commander. I appreciate that, Commander. I just don't want you to think that I'm a... a whiner. <laughs> Besides, I've got my past squared away. Alright. So, what is this way? Nothing as of now. Over here is a medical bay. Dr. Chuckles. Ooh.
Liara. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. It's pretty crazy. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common, not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. <laughs> but I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. You Asari lived for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. 
We do not focus They're like on the elves. loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Like I, I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. You must enjoy something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. Kinky. What? No, I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. I should go. <laughs> Goodbye, Shepard. Sorry, I have pretty cool, um... Lore? History? Culture? What are you gonna call it? All the alien species do, really. I mean, Krogan are, like, all... Rambo, basically. All extreme BAs that want to conquer the world and fight constantly, no matter what. Tribal. Pretty interesting, in my opinion. Does my inventory have a limit? How much I can carry? Doesn't appear that way yet, does it? Command, how are you? Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. That's tough, but you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, CSEX rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. Commander, you have a minute to talk. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? Don't mince words, Chief. What's your concern? This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. I'm not gonna lock them in the sleeper pods for the whole trip, Williams. I'd be more comfortable if they didn't have access to engineering and the CIC. We... humanity, I mean, 
We have to learn to rely on ourselves. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. <laughs> the council's had a grudge against us since the first contact war. I don't think it's a grudge. I think it's... Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. <laughs> Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, sir. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. You're lucky. I lost my family on Mindoir. Are you related to anyone I'd have heard of? Couldn't say, Commander. I read about Mindoir. The Alliance screwed the pooch on that one. Should have had a bigger garrison. Is that why you're out here? To take the fight to the pirates? I'm here to put hypervelocity rounds through the heads of bad guys. Most satisfying part of the job, Commander. All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. Mm, our first romantic option. <sighs> what about me? Seems kind of corny. Would you kiss anyone I ordered you to? That depends, sir. If you ordered me to kiss a superior officer, that would be a violation of the regs concerning fraternization. <laughs> that would make it an illegal order. I'd be required to decline and relieve you of command. Sir. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. Man. So, we've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't this you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well, and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him. So I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. Huh. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. 
If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. <laughs> Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. I already so talked to him about that stuff. Shepard. Tali. Oh, hello, Shepard. What is wrong? Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. Hmm. Don't I guess want that. you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. See you later. All the aliens have such interesting backstories. Like the Asari are like all female. And can mate with anybody and they do it telepathically or however that works and they live forever they're like elves and they're all magical and then the krogans are like super military like and strong i assume there's females i actually don't know yet i don't know and then there's the uh Corians, who are all like their home world blew up and the air didn't blow up, but they lost their home world and invented this alien or this AI that's taken over everything. And now they got to deal with that while they're all their whole race is flying around on spaceships in a space and they don't go anywhere else. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Do I want to go to Pharos? Escape Pharos, see why the colony was attacked by Geth or to Novaria. Head to Novaria to investigate reports of Geth on the world. The Geth have attacked the world of Pharaohs. Your primary objective is to go to Zeus Hope Colony to investigate what, what Farron is after and why he sent his Geth troops to the planet. Alright, let's go to Pharaohs. Is 
zipping across the universe. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasana Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't say anymore in an unsecured communication. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the Diplomat's Lounge on the Presidium. received a cryptic message from Nasana Dantius, an Asari ambassador on the Citadel. She wants to meet with you in person. Don't know what that is. Eros. The Exogeny Corporation has founded a, founded a pilot colony on Pharos to explore the Prothean ruins that blanket two-thirds of the planet's landmass. The atmosphere is fouled with dust, terrestrial travel was hampered by crumbled debris dozens of meters deep. There are indicators that Pharos was a much colder world in the past. Pharos has two large moons, Ocean the Farther and Varda. Or, sorry, Orkin and Varda. 300 people. Exogeny building. 3.2 Earth years. up here. How the heck do you get off this ship? I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. Saving my boots from burning lava is part of your job, Joker. We don't give medals to soldiers for doing their jobs. That figures. <laughs> Just get me a nice card and a cake. No coconut, though. I hate that crap. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff I already Lieutenant talked Jeff about Moreau. this. Plus, I love to make little I was just thinking. Like I didn't pick the name. I have to go. All right, see you. He has nothing new to talk about. Uh, mm. could mix it up and bring these two. She's a she's an adept apparently. I need some like fight in the other area. That's a good group. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Um so let's see, I got four points. Very assist. Probably pretty good. What's this? Stasis. Next target able to move or attack. Increase the strength of your shields. Next that out so I don't have to bring the quarry in all the time. Um, combat armor, probably good. And then Garish, yeah, he's got like a billion points.
melee weapon damage one percent increases melee damage. That's dumb. Oh no, increases weapon damage by one percent, two percent. That's not dumb. uses a sniper rifle I think a lot of the time so he can use this it'll give him plus 100 damage versus organics give him that uh, specially calibrated size can increase weapon accuracy by 7% sure and he'll also use his assault rifle a lot And I think we even have Turian armor. There we go. There we go. and roll here. David Al Talaka Talakani. We saw your ship. Fidan wants to speak with you immediately. Who's Fidan? He's our leader. He needs your help to prepare for the Geth. They're making another push. Please, up the stairs past the freighter. Look out! Oh my. <laughs> I'm a little... please. joking around. I don't even know where we are. Uh, I assume we landed. Oh, I gotta go through all that stuff again. That's lame. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Let's hurry up and do this. Um... And I will put a point in the barrier. Hmm. Just because of all that nonsense that just happened.
Um, yeah, so we're good there. Equipment. Garrus. Turian armor. Shock absorber. This. Organics. And he uses a sniper rifle. And we will give him chemical rounds. Level 3 detection. Make sure Ashley's up to snuff here. We have basically all terrain armor. Yes. Oh, and now we will save it. Because... Because of things. Did you guys see that sniper just annihilate? I didn't like that at all. We saw your ship. What's so Please, up the stairs past the freighter. Take that. Shots to the face. Oh no. These things. Glad you guys could shoot him. Holy Get cow. Head to the tunnels. Make sure they're secure. Don't shoot. What, what if I find Geth there? Are you saying you won't go? Down the first, the Geth will surely kill us all. How is a woman supposed to think with guns going off all around? I fear the Geth will kill us all. Am I supposed to talk to you? The Geth are mounting another attack. While decrypting these logs, you found something suspicious. Several months worth of human rations were delivered to an uncharted world in the Voyager cluster. The logs aren't clear, but it appears that they may have been dropped off somewhere in the Amazons. Okay. Glad they finally sent somebody to help us. You're a bit late, aren't you? Arcelia. Sorry, Commander. Everyone's on edge since. Watch out! We've got Geth in the tower! Protect the heart of the colony! Hoorah! Engaging oh, great. Seems like there's more.
didn't mean to do that. Protect the heart of the colony. Is there more of them? Take out the arrows. Oh no. Bunkered. Check in with Fight Ann, but I think we're done here. Okay. There's a lot of uh, robots we just fought to death. Tower secure, thanks to you, Commander. I'm just glad your colony is safe. I appreciate your concern and your efforts against the Geth. They may have been slowed, but they'll be back. They always come back. Tell me what the Geth want. Why are they attacking you? If you want answers, go ask them yourselves. We don't know what they're after. They came, they attacked us, that's all we know. Their main base is at the Exogeny headquarters. A good place to start looking if you want answers. What's Exogeny? It's the company most of us work for before the attacks. They fund this colony. The Skyway leads directly to Exogeny headquarters. You can't miss it. Of course, there's an army of Geth between here and there. I didn't expect this would be easy. Then maybe I can get this colony operational again. What can you tell me about the defenses the Geth have set up? I don't have any details, but I'll wager it's a lot more fortified than the command post. They landed at least one Geth ship at Exogeny, and I've seen large walking tanks on the Skyway. Expect a hard fight. What do you need done to get this place back on its feet? We need those Geth destroyed. Arcelia's right. There are still Geth in the tunnels. We also have more mundane problems like food, water, and power. I'm not sure where we stand on those matters. You should talk to the people overseeing them. Is there anything I can do to solve your water shortage? Maka Doyle has been assigned to that particular issue. If you have any insight to offer, please speak with her. You mentioned something about a food shortage. Davin Reynolds is tasked with securing food for the immediate future. If you can assist, please speak with him. What's wrong with the colony's power supply? May O'Connell is working on our power problems. She'd know more about it than I do. Do you have information about Geth in the lower tunnels? Nothing new. They're in the tunnel somewhere, likely guarding a transmitter to coordinate attacks. It's not a critical threat right now, but getting rid of that transmitter will help us defend against further attacks. Let's talk about Zoo's Hope and Pharos in general. Of course, Commander. <laughs> I'll talk to you when I learn more. Good 
luck, Commander. All right, guys. I think we'll pick up here for the next episode. Uh, we'll talk to everybody who's running that little uh, department or whatever he just said, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll hopefully be able to get pretty far on this uh, planet on the next episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Here, let's still draw out.